17 and all your dreams are knocking on your front door. I want to cry now thinking about how much I didn't like myself. We're not alone at all. None of us are alone. 25, you realize that nothing is the same as before. I wish I could bottle this feeling up and share it with people. Where did we go? Where did we go? Where did we go? All of those years. I'm expected to stay at home and take care of everybody. How did we end up? How did we end up? How did we end up here? I thought, I'm never going to see my kids again, and this is how their mother is going to die. Is it all, oh, all a lie? Hi, beautiful people. I'm Rachel Sievers. And I'm Rihanna. And you're listening to Consent to Treat. Hey, your is coming here, me free. Hi, beautiful people. You are listening to Consent to Treat. I'm Rachel Sievers, retired psychotherapist, life coach, and the funnest place I've ever had sex is after hours in the library. And this is Rihanna, mom of four, mental health enthusiast. And I'm about average height, but I do add an inch because I have a humongous forehead. That's not true. No, it is. I mean, we're friends and it's nice that you say that and I appreciate it, but I absolutely do. Do you know Megamind? Have you ever seen the movie? I don't even know what to say right now because your forehead is like normal size. No. Anyways, today we are listening to a real life counseling session between me and Julie, a 41-year-old hairstylist, fitness buff, and single mother of four. After an amicable divorce from the father of her children, Julie entered a relationship with, quote, the love of her life. But she soon discovered the love of her life is an extremely abusive narcissist. After a dramatic two years with him, punctuated with the highest highs of her life and the darkest lows, she managed to get out of the relationship and now lives with a restraining order against him. She originally came to me for counseling one year ago because she was experiencing intense symptoms of PTSD, panic attacks, nightmares, shaking, avoidance. Now she is almost 100% free of symptoms of PTSD. In fact, you'll hear her work through her triggers like a pro during her sessions. Currently, her work in counseling is around the grief and loss of her relationship, trusting herself and others, and love. For the sake of her privacy, we are keeping Julie's real name and identifying information hidden. She has given us permission to record and publish this session. I want to warn all of the listeners out there, this session also includes gruesome details of emotional and physical violence. If this is a trigger for you, please do not listen to this episode or only listen to it when you have the support of a mental health professional nearby. Please be aware, sessions with me always include mature language. Rihanna, are we ready? We're ready. All right. And with that, hate it, love it, learn something. Enjoy. Today's episode of Consent to Treat was brought to you by Shrinks Clubhouse. Located here in Central California, Shrinks Clubhouse is a group of dedicated, passionate volunteers who want to provide a place where youth and families struggling with mental illness and substance abuse can find support and resources to lead productive lives and thrive. I met with the founder, Gwen, last week, and what really strikes me about her mission is that at its core, it's all about truly seeing people for who they are, respecting them. She values each unique person who walks through the door. She says all people are welcome both to volunteer and participate in the programs. I love what she says about, I want to get to know each person who walks through the door so that we can figure out whatever it is that they need. You need shoes? We're going to get you shoes. Do you need family? We're going to get you family. Do you need help getting a job? We're going to help you get a job. They are just willing to get to know everyone and do whatever it takes to help them thrive. She believes that community can do what all the government agencies are trying to do. So she's like, let's volunteer, let's all come together and take care of one another. So not only is she calling out for more volunteers, but she's also calling out to people who need services. Come one, come all, everyone is welcome. Shrinks Clubhouse, so excited that this is a part of our community. You can find Shrinks Clubhouse online at gsclubhouse.org. You can also find them on Instagram at Shrinks Clubhouse. That's S C H R. A-N-K-S Clubhouse. 
Welcome back. Thank you. I'm how glad you, to be here. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm actually really good today. Yeah? Why? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've just been working on the ex- acceptance thing, like accepting my past and things that I've done that I'm not so happy or proud of and not being ashamed of them and worried about looking down upon myself for them, just moving on from them, stepping over them. Um, appreciating them mm. and trying to just become a better me. Hey. hey. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I think um that task that you gave me from last time, I really thought about it a lot and did a lot of like thinking about that. Just mm-hmm. like get over it. Just don't look back. You know, you did it. Big deal. Brush my shoulders off and move on. Nice. Yeah. So that's where I'm at today. <laughs> yeah. I think you it kind of goes up and down. Yeah, of course. And it will continue to go up and down. So much of our suffering is caused by fighting the acceptance of what is. If we had 100% acceptance of everything exactly as it is, you know, our character, our thoughts, our emotions, our situations, what happens in our life, what doesn't happen in our life. If we just were a hundred percent in acceptance, we'd be at peace all the time. Right. But it's when we fight, we fight our emotions and we right. fight our thoughts and we fight who we are. We fight who other people are and right. we fight God and what right. God is giving us in our life or the universe right. is giving us, whatever you want to call it. And that's where so much of our suffering comes from. Yeah, I didn't really even think about it that way, but you're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Good. Yeah. So is there anything in particular you wanted to focus on today? Well, I think um, I I have sort of been thinking a lot about wanting to open myself back up to people and not be so closed off and you know, people want to, you know, talk to me or date me or something like that. And I'm just like holding them to these unrealistic standards now, I think, where I'm like, hey, um, one wrong thing that I see or something and I'm like, get out of here. Or I don't know, I'm just judging people differently now. Okay. Where before I was like, everybody's great. And you know how I told you everybody starts at 100% with me and they start losing percentage as they go or Mm -hmm. they can even gain it back um but I feel like people are kind of starting out at like maybe 80 percent or less maybe 75 percent and I'm not giving the same kind of 100 percent that I thought I was giving before Mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah kind of sounds funny but um is this a trust issue maybe like I'm not trusting these people maybe I think maybe that does have a lot to do with it okay I'm I'm not really sure I I mean it would make a lot of sense to me right I think I'm just kind of like afraid now I have like these fears of people that I never had before like is this person gonna screw me over is this person gonna screw me over and then instead of sort of like taking their good deeds or sweet compliments or something as I would appreciate it before and be like wow that's so sweet you know they didn't have to say that but they said that now I'm like what the hell are your intentions and why are you saying that to me correct and I don't want to feel that way okay um just for the sake of our listeners so maybe they have an idea of where this came from you know I know it you Mm -hmm. know it would you mind sort of recapping the final thing that happened between you and let's let's call him mark okay so that's funny you say that um so mark and i were in a relationship for two years i felt like he was the love of my life and i still do feel like i really love him a lot but um you know he was extremely mentally controlling um didn't start out that way didn't start out that way at all love 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 bombing um so i can was great it's safe to say he was a full-blown narcissist and sociopath right and um 
I mean, at first he was amazing. I thought, wow, I didn't know anybody existed like this. And um, he carried that on for a good, I want to say year and a half. So you fully trusted that. I fully trusted that. I am not a trusting person. I, I was not raised to trust people. Um, so I didn't trust my parents and I didn't trust anyone in my life. Even my ex-husband, it took me like 10 years before I even trusted him as much as I trusted this guy in a year. Mm. So then, um, I mean, everything he said was like, if I wanted to check up on something, it was true. So after about a year and a half, I started noticing patterns and I'm really good at that with people. Like, I, you know, I'll just start noticing patterns and his pattern was like, if he didn't get his way, he would use, you know, well, I'll just not talk to you for a day or two, or I'll be rude to you for a day or two until he gets his way. But I didn't see it like that at first. I would just think like, what is wrong with him? He's like throwing a fit like a man fit or something like man he's fit. a little bit immature you know I'm like anyway slowly started feeling manipulated but I didn't see it as manipulation I just thought like okay if I could just be better if I could you know I would I'm a self-blamer so I think like what can I do to make this better next time you know and try harder and harder and harder and each time something would happen and it would be something even as dumb as not reading my text message for five minutes because four minutes was okay Mm -hmm. but five minutes it'd be like what are you doing you're too busy for me fine I won't talk to you for the rest of the day and it's like who the hell even does that now that I look back I'm like what the heck why would I put up with that but um so I started seeing that he was bullshit and started kind of maybe like calling him out on it here and there, like gently and sweetly. So you started catching on. I started catching on to his bullshit and I started kind of like slowly mentioning things here and there because I thought, well, wait a minute. This isn't okay. You know? Yeah. Double standards. Um, for example, um, on Instagram, I asked him one time, well, what's okay. What's okay for, me to like like can I like a friend's selfie or something like if it's a guy and he said well not if it's like a local guy but if it's like a a star or something like that you can and so I thought that's so silly my ex-husband and I had never even had that conversation before you know so I'm thinking like well I'm gonna go on Mark's social media and start looking around well all these posts that he was liking were like half nude local girls like throwing their bodies around Mm -hmm. which no I mean it didn't make me feel jealous in any way because I mean we have eyes we can use them I mean he had freedom to look and whatever it didn't bother me Mm -hmm. but I mentioned something to him about it one time and said hey you know I know that you don't want me liking local people's posts like even if it's just a selfie fully clothed if it's a guy but you're liking these girls that are literally naked on their photos, Mm -hmm. literally have zero clothes on. It's like a studio photo or something. Yeah. With not even a bikini on or underwear and bra. And you're liking their post and their full bottom is hanging out. And I just don't see why it's a big deal for me to like a guy's photo, but you can like that. Mm -hmm. And oh, it was like a blow up. It was like a blow up. He was going to try and break up with me. And I was like, go ahead, go ahead, you know? And then he started seeing that I was kind of standing my ground and standing up for myself and sticking up for myself. And his... Which totally triggers a narcissist. Oh, and then they awful. ramp it up. It was awful. They, if they don't get what they want at this level, then they'll take it up to the next level and mm-hmm. see if they can get what they want. Right. Which was the case. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse over time. So... Um, three weeks before what I'll call call the dark night, um, he was kind of getting upset with me and trying to gaslight me and he had been gaslighting me for months and I just finally was aware that something's not right with him mentally and that he's trying to manipulate me, 
um, and using m manipulation to get me to do what he wants me to do. So, um, which was shut up and not talk about anything wrong that he was doing. So we kind of were getting into it and I just told him, you know, it's not going to work out. And he freaked out and told me to give him my phone because he wanted to take all of my pictures that I've, we've ever had together off of there. And we've had, you know, explicit videos together and stuff like that. And he wanted me to take them off of my phone. And I told him, no, those are my videos. They're not yours. They're mine. They belong to me. They're mine. And I'm not taking them off of there. Well, he put his hands on me, pushed me, shoved me by my breast implant, like hard. I had bruises all over my arms, like grab marks. Um, he shoved me across the room. He like basically held me hostage in the corner of his room. I couldn't get out. And he's, you know, like a big, strong lifter. And he was just so scary that I just backed down and stopped. And he was like, give me your phone. And he was trying to put it in my face to show the, so I can um, open it with my face ID. Mm -hmm. And so I was like closing my eyes and like looking down, wouldn't let him have it. Um, and then finally he kind of lunged at me again. And so I just threw the phone on the bed, like, here you go, have the phone. I don't want him to beat me up anymore. You know, as you're retelling this, what's it like for you? Not as bad as it would have been a couple months ago. Okay. But um, I'm kind of like my heart's racing. I'm okay. not like freaking out like I normally would be. All right. I'm not. Yeah. I think I'm kind of controlling it a lot better or maybe it's not exciting me as much as it would before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not shaking, mm -hmm. which normally I would be, but my heart's beating fast. Okay. Yeah. So let's just slow down a little bit. Breathe into it just a little bit. We recognize that the heart is going. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Look at yeah, you. You're doing normally your I would be panicking. That's right. Yep. I just kind of close my eyes, rub my legs, let the feeling come, let it happen. Yeah. You're doing good. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I gave him my phone and he threw it in the pool. And then as soon as he do it, did that, I was like, you dumbass, I have iCloud. Why did you throw my phone in there? Like, that was pointless. I still have all the photos on my iCloud, you idiot. And he, he, it snapped him. It was literally like a switch. It snapped him from being anger, angry and aggressive to like, it like soothed him to do that. Mm. And it almost kind of like was a switch, like turned it off. And he was like, I can't believe I just did that. And it's almost like he didn't care about putting hands on me and beating me up and flinging me around. He twirled me around. I felt like a ballerina in a play or something because of how fast he twirled me around. Like he was so strong, but he, nothing calmed him down until he threw my phone in the pool. And then he was like, I can't believe I just did that. I'm so sorry. And then spent the next, I don't know, hour begging me to stay and please don't leave. And it changed from being like, rawr, to being like, oh, please, please don't leave me. I love you. I can't believe I did that. And it wasn't, I can't believe I put my hands on you. It was, I can't believe I threw your phone in the pool, you know? Wow. So just impossible to follow the train of thought right there. Right. So, and when I say impossible, I, I actually mean impossible. There, there is no figuring out the way they think or how they get to where they get. I, I mean, was we, in we shock. could try forever and it just would never make sense. Yeah. And that's what I did. Spent the next three weeks trying to figure out, you know, the next day he was like, I'm not paying for your full phone. Cause you're, you had part in the argument. So I'll pay you half. So he gave me $400 and I had to go get a brand new phone. And then he spent the next three days pissed off at me, mad at me, rude, cruel, saying mean, cruel things, you know, mm -hmm. like your body's this and your body's that. It's all blown out from having kids and all these weird things, you know, you're not a good girlfriend. A good girlfriend would do this. A good girlfriend would do that. And it's like, wow, okay. At the time, did that sink in? No, you didn't. You didn't no. actually believe that, or I believe I believed it. I 
I mean, what what do you mean? Did it sink in like like? Oh, I'm not a good girlfriend. Oh, it sunk in then. Yes. Okay. So at the time you were, I thought you you were like the reality. No, I was like, oh my God. I like, I was like the best wife to my ex-husband and I know I was. And I, I'm just this horrible girlfriend, like really evaluating, like, am I really a good girlfriend or not? Cause I thought I was before, but now I'm, I'm a horrible girlfriend. Like, You know, I could have approached the situation different that night. I could have said, you know, uh, okay, and agreed with him and just went to bed and maybe talked to him about it when he wasn't upset. These are the kinds of things that you were thinking? Yes. Like, maybe I could have just, even though I know he was straight lying to my face and gaslighting me, maybe I could have just gone along with it and played dumb and just said okay and laid down and gone to sleep and then maybe talk to him about it the next day Mm -hmm. maybe I didn't need to approach it with such strength I I've always felt like a strong woman so I felt like maybe I approached it with too much masculinity or something you know and this is this is one of the key traits that narcissists see in a person and they prey on it. So someone who's willing to self-evaluate, take responsibility when they have a part in something and they're willing to make adjustments for their partner, Mm -hmm. which are really healthy traits to have in a healthy, intimate relationship, right? So when a narcissist sees that a person exhibits these traits, they usually subconsciously, they're really attracted to that because they can mind fuck you. Right I into thinking, fucked. into thinking, you actually had a part in this man twirling you around, pushing you, grabbing you to the point where you had bruises. That that you, that you had a part in that. Yeah, I felt like it was my fault. Right. So you're going to self evaluate. Did I have a part in that? What could I have done better? What adjustments could I make next time? This because this is your character, mm-hmm. right? Right. I'm easygoing and can you know, sure, I'll move here and move there to accommodate you. And that's basically, I guess, what I was doing. So um, it was a rough week. And then the next two weeks was amazing. He was great, super, I guess what you would call like future faking, like, oh, we're going to this and we're going to do that. And I'm going to, it's going to be like this and it's going to be like that. And Mm. I've never put my hands on a woman before. And like I DV'd you and I, you didn't deserve it. Like domestic violence to you mm-hmm. and you didn't deserve it. And I'm a horrible person and I can't believe I did that. And I feel so bad for you and you shouldn't even be putting up with me and things like that. And mm-hmm. I, I can't believe I did something like that to somebody like you. And you're so beautiful and your body's amazing and you're so wonderful and you're such a wonderful girlfriend. Well, yeah, because I wasn't making his damn dinner for the next three weeks because I used to make his meal prep every single week. Wow. Along with mine. Wow. I know. For two years. So I was just like, you know what? I'm not doing this for him anymore. I'm not doing it. I'm not cleaning his house. I'm not doing anything for him anymore. All these little like sweet things. Like I would see dishes and just do the dishes for him or whatever. I was like, man, F that. I'm not doing that for him anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, he hurt me, you know? And I'm like, this isn't right. And I started kind of like rationalizing like... Wait, this is reality. I didn't deserve that. Like I I was just basically saying, "Hey, you're lying to my face and I'm not going to accept your lies." I shouldn't have backed down. So, fast forward 3 weeks after that incident, um we had a rough day and we were laying down in bed and Doing our normal routine, I would... Rough day, meaning like between the two of you? Between the two of us, yeah. I think he just was in a moody... He was just moody, Mm -hmm. and I wasn't, and I could tell he was moody. And I'm super bubbly and like positive and like upbeat. Um, Like my kids will ask me, why are you so silly all the time? And I feel like, do you want to have a fun life or do you want to have a boring life? So I'm that kind of person, just like, do, 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 he you know, make (laughs) silly jokes or make fun of myself or do something silly just to keep it light, you know? Yeah. And I was trying to do that and it wasn't working anyway. So we were doing our routine for the night, which I would like, he would lay down in bed and I would sit down on his lap and like rub his chest and like tell him, 
he was buff and sexy and all these things. And he was like, yeah, well, I'm not going to be in the mood tonight. Um, if we do something like I'm not going to be in the mood to finish, but you know, like I'll get you there. I'm like, no, it's cool. Like, we don't have to be intimate. Like, if you don't want to be, it's fine. You know, and he was like, no, I know that's why you come over here. So, you know, I, I know you look forward to um, being intimate with me. So, you know, I'll just like take care of you and let you, you know, have your pleasure. And I'm not in the mood. And I was like, okay, so. And that's like new. That's not a way that you guys communicate with each other. About- no, we were intimate every single day solitary time we saw each other Mm -hmm. like a lot Mm -hmm. so I was like okay like it's like we're fine even if he was upset he would still like be intimate with me so he's telling me this and I'm like no it's fine babe like don't worry about it well uh he's like no lay down you know oh (laughs) lay down you know so I'm like okay well we start like being intimate and he's like laying on top of me And I'm not, I'm completely disconnected. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I can't, I'm sorry. I just can't do this. Well, he got pissed off. And it was like that one night, it was like a switch. He got super pissed off. He throws me like to the side. He's like on top of me, like kissing me and stuff like that. And and then he gets pissed, throws me to the side. And he's like, lays down. And I'm like feeling so creeped out, like uncomfortable, just like, oh, what is even happening? And I'm scared because I'm like, he's pissed. Like, is he going to do the same thing he did last time? Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I went into that like complete shudder. Like I'm shaking. I'm like sweating. Like my armpits were literally sweating in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Like they were wet in two, two seconds. I was scared. And, um, he's like, yeah, um, you're sitting here making me do something I don't want to do something against my will. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, um, I'm just so irritated with you right now. And I said, well, you're the one who told me to like lay down. And he was like, yeah, you're forcing me to do something I don't want to do. And I sat up, I was like, I'm done. I didn't say that to him, but in my head, I was like, I am done with this. I'm, this is crazy. So I sat up and I said, you were laying on top of me. You asked me to lay down. You were laying on top of me. You are gaslighting me and it is not going to work. I love you, but I want to talk about this tomorrow. So I turned around and I started putting my clothes on. But not only did I start putting my clothes on, but I put my shoes on too. And so then he panics and he flings across the bed and he's holding me, baby, baby, don't go, baby, baby, don't go, don't go, please don't go, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. And I said, it's okay. I love you. And I said it in a calm voice because I was scared as shit. I was scared shitless. And I think he could tell by holding me I was scared because I'm the type, my whole body will shake. You've seen me. Mm -hmm. My whole entire body starts shaking. So, um, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And and I said, you know, I love you. I just want to talk about it tomorrow. And he's like, where are you going to go? And I said, I'm going to go home. I'm a homebody. I was like, I'm just going to go home and we're going to sleep it off and we'll talk about it tomorrow. He was like, all right, then fuck it. I'm, I'm taking you home then. And he switches back to the Mm -hmm. insane, crazy stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. So I get scared. So I grab my bag and get out of the way where he had like held me hostage the time before. Yeah. And I get out of the way with my bag and he's like, fuck it. I'm taking you home. So we go out to the front living room and we make it out there. And I'm like, okay, he's, he can't take me home because we had been drinking. So I was like, well, I'm going to call my son and have him come pick me up. Mind you, it's like one in the morning. He's like, fuck that. Blah, blah, blah. I can't believe you, blah, 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 saying just rude stuff. I don't even remember what it was because it was just horrible stuff. Yeah. And at this point, I'm like, just get me out of the door, you know. It's like, you're fucking this and you're fucking that and you're fucking this and you're that. You know, I I can't even, I don't even want to say words because I don't know what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So 
he's like, get the fuck out of my house. So he opens the front door, shoves me out, closes the door, locks the door, turns off all the lights outside. So I'm in pitch black outside. And I said, all right, then it's fine. I'll just call, which is his ex. You're going to have to bleep that. And then, um, so I said that and he opens the door and he doesn't say a word. He pulls me inside and my feet are like scraping across the threshold because that's how hard he's pulling me in. It, I just slid right against the concrete and right over the mat, right over the threshold. And he closes the door and locks it. And he said, I'm going to fucking kill you and kill your fucking kids. And he picks me up by my neck. I'm completely dangling. And I have this heavy ass bag in my hand. So my neck is holding all of this weight. And my legs were literally dangling. He flings me around 180 degrees, bends me completely backwards over his couch, the back of his couch, and gets in my face. And he's got both hands around my neck. And he's telling me, I'm going to fucking kill you and kill your fucking kids. And then I give him zero reaction at all. (sighs) Yeah, okay. Here's coming. It's coming. What's coming? My feeling. I feel like, um, like shaking in my tummy. Okay. It's not as bad as it used to be. Right. You're just going to welcome it. Yeah. Just invite it in. Yeah. And maybe that's why it doesn't come so bad anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't fight it. I just let it, let it do its thing. It was big that time. Yeah. It was big. <laughs> it was pretty big. Yeah, so I give him no good, reaction. Good job noticing that. Yeah, it was really big. Thank you. Um, I just rub my legs, and that really helps a lot, kind of like move my neck around. Yeah, I gave him no reaction. I mean, he, he, we were face to face. He's got both hands around me. I can't breathe at all. Like, there's no getting any air in whatsoever and it was a long time he did it for a very long time and we just stared at each other I could tell he was like trying to get me to not breathe so I thought well here we go I'm never gonna see my kids again and this is how their mother is gonna die so I just laid there and I know that in those situations if you panic then you die faster. Mm -hmm. So I get, maybe that's why I didn't give a reaction because I thought the more calm I stay, the better off my chances are of living. And these are the things I'm thinking as this is happening. Like it's fine. If I just calm, calm down and then play dead at the end, I could probably get out of this, but this is how I'm going to die. And my children aren't going to have a mother anymore. And then he didn't get a reaction out of me. And he squeezed even harder, like a hard squeeze after that. So after a long period of time, I don't even know. It was for sure minutes. He squeezed even harder, like hard. And it hurt. Like I thought he broke my bones, like the bones in my neck. I thought for sure he broke them. And then he threw me backwards over the other side of the couch Mm -hmm. and then I threw my phone across the room because he's like give me your fucking phone at the same time that he threw me and so I threw my phone all the way across the room because I was like he's gonna run over there and he did and I ran out the front door and I ran over like to the neighbor's house across the street and I rang their doorbell and they have a ring like a ring um it was like a little sign in there yeah they have like a little sign in their front yard so I was like oh I'll just ring their doorbell so when the guy opened the door, I ran off because I, I chickened out because I thought I'm going to I'm going to tattle on him and then he's going to like really kill me, you know, mm. because he had already threatened to kill my kids. So I thought, oh, my kids, you know. So I was scared. He wanted me to come back over to his house. I didn't want to go back over there, but he had my phone, my brand new phone, my brand new phone from three weeks before. Mm-hmm. 
So he love bombed me. Babe, I'm so sorry. I've never done that. He was crying. I didn't, I hadn't seen him cry like that. I'd seen him cry one other time, but not like that, you know? So that was a dark night. Um, after that, he threatened if I told on him that he would kill my children, especially my oldest. He's like my person. Um, because we grew up together. Yeah. And he would tell me, you know, all because he does um, deliveries late at night. Mm -hmm. um, he would say, oh, I'll stay up late. And what if he has his throat slit sometime? Or mm. he would say, you know, your kid's bedroom's in the front of the house. It'd be really easy to light their bedrooms on fire. And the one that's on the top bunk's going to die first. Things like that, you know. So I just thought, how am I going to get out of this? Right. I'm stuck in this relationship. You know, so I didn't tell on him initially. So now, I mean, that's why I don't trust people, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I just don't <laughs> trust people. It's hard. No, absolutely. I feel like tense around people mm -hmm. sometimes when I should be relaxed. I feel myself like sitting with my hands together and my legs tight and my arms in real tight. And I'm like just at a friend's house chilling. Yeah. And I, tr I feel like I trust them, but why am I like, so because you felt like you trusted Mark too. Maybe. I mean, you, you, you were all in right away. All in. You gave him every bit of you. Yes. All your trust, all your loyalty, all of your commitment, all of your energy, everything. And he didn't deserve it. No. But how would you have known? No, at first he deserved it, I think. Like if he was able to maintain that personality that he portrayed initially, I think he would have more than deserved it. Mm -hmm. But how was I to know that it was going to turn out the way it did, but right. it did. And maybe that's why I'm just like, I didn't trust people before, but now I'm like, I really don't trust people. Right. Because you might seem trustworthy, but we'll, we'll see. Right. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. So I want to get past that. I want to, Why? I just don't, I don't want to close myself off to the entire world. It feels good to me to love. And it feels good to give my love to people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm holding it in and not giving my love to people like I want to. And that is a part of, I guess, like the acceptance part that you were saying. I'm starting to see that I'm not giving as much love as freely as I did before. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that. I'm okay with not giving as much trust or being more judgy. Okay. I'm not, a ju I, I really am not as judgy of a person as I have been in the last couple of months. Okay. And that was bothering me. And like you were saying, like, you know, you're growing, you're shape shifting, accept yourself for who you are that part is really hard for me to accept mm -hmm. and I don't I want to find like a middle ground where I could feel comfortable being friendly and outgoing and loving like I was before but maybe not as much <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense it kind of sounds silly you're okay with it looking different than it's looked before right no you want it to be the same. I feel like that part of me, I want to keep the same, but it's not. It's not going to be, and yeah. I'm not accepting it. It's not the same. Yeah. And I'm having trouble accepting that, you know? Mm -hmm. What, if you were to imagine yourself just freely loving on people uh -huh. again, uh -huh. what would have to be happening underneath to make it safe for you to do that again. I think that's the trust part. But trusting who, trusting what? Myself the most. Bingo! <laughs> myself. You got it. I'm having a hard time trusting myself. Yeah. 
So when I meet a guy that I really like and he's great and he's got a lot of great qualities, I mean, we're all going to find red flags, but I'm like, never mind. Possibly because I don't trust myself. Like he's great and he's doing all these great things and he's making me feel great, but I'm not trusting my own judgment. So first of all, highlighting for yourself every time you pay close attention to your gut and you, you, um, like you, you back it up, you know, mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I don't, I don't want to be touched right now or mm -hmm. please don't stand so close to me or yeah, come on in or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever your gut's telling you and talking to yourself about it. Like, Hey, look, you just did what was good for you. Look, you, you did what was good for you again. Look at all these times that you do what's good for you. So calling to attention, actually how trustworthy you are already. Mm -hmm. Like patting myself on the back. Yeah. Because those moments can come and go and we won't even like realize it. You know, we don't, we don't realize sometimes our growth. I don't give myself enough credit. Right. And then positioning yourself to behave in a way where you are your own most trustworthy person. Right. Even when it's difficult paying close attention to your gut and, and supporting it. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Trust right. building exercises for yourself because, right. because the reality is, is we can't trust anything outside of ourselves. We can't, right. anybody could turn on us at any time. Right. Anybody could be lying to us. I, I could be, you know, right. Totally not even genuine. And you wouldn't even know it. Right. Um, so trusting other people is sort of a futile thing. But when you trust yourself that, uh, hey, you know, if this person begins to hurt me, I'm gone. I'll take really good care of myself. Mm -hmm. Or if this person continues to be great, I trust that I will, you know, enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I'll do what's good for me. Mm -hmm. When you get to that place, it doesn't matter what other people do. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be good because mm -hmm. I, I take good care of myself. Then yeah. that positions you to be in such a safe place that love, love can begin to flow again. Yeah. That but, makes sense. And the way you talk about your experience, not in, not so much today, but in, you know, the last couple of months, mm -hmm. kind of beating yourself up mm -hmm. about these decisions lot. that I've made and choices that I've made. And, you know, I can't believe that I did that. And when I look back on it, it sounds so crazy, you know, talking about it like that. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> it's right. Being embarrassed about it uh -huh. sounds like a person who is a person who doesn't trust herself. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hundred percent what it is. Right. Like most times, if you throw me a ball, I will miss, I will <laughs> catch it. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, you know, so I, I completely do not trust the fact that I will catch a ball if you throw it to me right? because history shows that I, um, I'm not capable of doing that. Uh -huh. Okay. And, you know, you've made some decisions that, that put you in a position where you were very, very hurt. So it makes sense that you've kind of broken your own trust a little right. bit, right? Like yeah. you did not catch that ball. No, I did you not didn't. catch that ball. <laughs> I did not catch the ball. You missed that one. <laughs> no, it hit me in the face. And that's okay. That's okay. It got me. But generally, you do catch the ball. Right. Just not that time. Yeah. So you got to build that trust back up for yourself. I'm going to work on that. Yeah. I think that's a good idea because there are a lot of really great things that I do for myself. And, you know, I am noticing narcissism here with guys Mm -hmm. narcissism there like love bombing and then mm -hmm. me not I don't know like they say great things and everything but I'm just like yeah yeah you know mm -hmm. I mean I'm super sweet like oh that, I appreciate you so much like it's so kind that you're saying that to me I'm super flattered I don't say like I'm not like yeah yeah flick off you know like I really want him in my head you're so nice I'm like how do you know that uh, no no but I see that I, I make him like list off the reasons like really I'm such a kind person go how on. do you know <laughs> carry on <laughs> Can you cite your sources, please? <laughs> no, you're just saying that. <laughs> yeah, just so you can get right in. Yeah. And 
they oftentimes they realize that I'm not easy like these other girls are mm-hmm. and then they get kind of bored with it yep. and stop trying and then I see that they're just kind of like trying to get nudes or something you know what I mean like yeah. trying to get a date or something or they might get a date but I'm not like easy I won't go back to their house or invite them to my house or something and then they kind of get like well that wasn't easy you know mm-hmm. and I just I don't know I can see their bullshit. Like they're only telling, they're not telling me that I'm beautiful because they want me to know that I'm beautiful. They are telling me I'm beautiful so they can get something out of it. And when they don't get something out of it, they're not going to tell me the next time. You so know? right now is a perfect moment for you to call yourself out and be like, Hey, look at how trustworthy I am. Thank you. That's a, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I'm able to pick stuff up yeah, and I don't go home with them and I don't give them nudes and I don't do the things that they want because I listen to my gut and I I value myself Mm -hmm. to me, pat on the back. I'm starting to realize you can see the difference. Bullshitters. (laughs) Yeah. And honest men. Yeah. I just want an honest one that I'm attracted to and it's not easy. No. I'm not attracted to men very easily. I mean, I'm attracted to peop- attractive people, but it takes a lot of mental, I think, to be attracted to somebody for me. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I think right now, I'm just kind of like, I've got my shield up and my dukes. And I'm like, who's next? <laughs> <laughs> who's going to come at Mike Tyson knockout next? <laughs> you know? Who's going to get the flick next? <laughs> the flick. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my friends that like, oh, they'll be like, what about this guy? What did he say? And I'm like, I don't know. In my mind, I'm telling him flick off, you know? Uh-huh. I, but I don't want to be like that. Too bad you are. I am. So you can either want to be like that or not. I just It's not going to change the fact that that's where you're at right now. It is where I'm at. And be it. I just need to be comfortable with that. I need to be more comfortable with being there right now yeah you know and I have I'll have like a really nice looking guy a lot of good great things going for himself trying to talk to me and I'm like yeah have a nice day (laughs) (laughs) you're sweet but have a nice day and then later on I'm like what what is wrong with me why am I like that you know why do you immediately go to something's wrong with you I, I put a lot of shame on myself I do. I for uh, everything. I could toast. I can put butter on toast wrong and be like, "What? Why'd you do what it? What is that? wrong with What's me? Wrong with me? Jeez, <laughs> lighten Dude, up. This is wrong." And I'm like, "What? Why didn't I do it like that?" Okay. So I I would just encourage you to always ask yourself, "Would I talk to my daughter like that?" That's a good way. Would to you look ever at say it. that to her if oh, if no. she wasn't attracted to a pursuer? Would you say, what is wrong with you? No. He was attractive. He has a degree and cute tattoos and you didn't like him. I know. I'd be like, what is wrong with you? Good no. girl. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. So you, that's the way you should be talking yeah. to yourself. Okay. Yeah. Cut that shit out. Yeah. Why did I do that? And that's, that's what you were taught to do. Yeah. Now you're going to re re teach yourself. How to talk to yourself like a grown ass, respectful, beautiful woman that you are. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, because I do teach my daughters that. Mm -hmm. So I need to speak to myself like I am them, like I am speaking to them. Right. Or like I would speak to them. Right. If you want to, we can start some reparenting stuff. What does that mean? Uh, Most of the time we start with a picture of yourself between the ages of like three and six Mm -hmm. and you either put it in a place or if you have several of them, you can keep one in your car, one in your mirror, one at work um, so that you always have this little you with you Mm -hmm. and you practice speaking to her the way she should have been spoken to when she was a little girl. Okay. And it's a really nice reminder you know, like if, if you were to walk up to that picture and say, what are you thinking? What is wrong with you? Ooh, it changes things, right? It changes things. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. It's really powerful. It feels like it would be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe that's a great idea. Let's do it then. Yeah. So 
Let's try that. I didn't. I don't think I realize there's so much damage there mm. as recently. Okay. Yeah, but I really feel a lot of strength. I feel like you've opened my mind a lot to strengths that I've had that I didn't know that I had. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at myself from a different point of view than I have before. And I'm seeing that I have made it through a lot of turmoil in the last year and I'm stronger than I thought I was mm -hmm. emotionally, mentally. And I appreciate you for helping me just kind of, I mean, you just kind of like put it into a different perspective and I feel like the way that I am shape shifting is for the better mm -hmm. and it's Absolutely. looking a lot better than I had predicted maybe like a year ago yeah 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 it feels better and I feel like I have somebody to go through this with and I'm not alone you're not and it, it not feels so good to have someone who cares and doesn't judge me maybe mm -hmm. like as critically as I do <laughs> but <laughs> it, in general just it feels good to have somebody say hey you're being mean to yourself you know mm -hmm. or pat yourself on the back yeah, you're doing yeah. good mm -hmm. you know it feels good and yeah. calming and comforting and I've had a lot of that in the last couple of weeks so I feel like I'm in a better place than the last time I was here being horrible to myself. <laughs> yeah. You're so good at that. You're so good at learning new things every session and Thank implementing you. them right away. You yeah. know, and you're really dedicated to growing. I have gone to counseling before and felt like, oh yeah, that helped, but not as much as it's helping me now or mm. it, like you said, you know, it could just be how people click. Or maybe you just understand or feel my feelings more, or I feel that you do more than other people have, or, you know, maybe my problems weren't as bad. So now they feel like they're pretty bad and um, I'm getting a lot. I'm you got big girl problems. Coming now. along, <laughs> you know, picking up these bridges and yeah. moving along quite nicely. You are. Thank you. Let's let's talk about love before we go. Okay. Let's talk about love. This is not a psychological conversation that we're having anymore. This okay. is stepping outside that realm and it's right. stepping into like a spirituality okay. or a, a, like a energetic conversation. Okay. Okay. All right. Love is an extinguishable flame. Mm -hmm. It's a spring that runs eternal mm -hmm. the like the love doesn't run out mm -hmm. it's what you are just because you are in a state where it doesn't quite feel safe to give and receive it mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not there it's not going away yeah, I think that's my fear it will not go away it will not as soon as your trust returns or wh whatever it is that that is like blocking that right now, mm -hmm. you'll see, oh, it's, it's there. I see it again. I feel it again. And it'll be just like that, you know, getting back on a bike. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm guessing there are moments where you feel it. I do. Yeah. And so it's like, that's, that's when that block is going away. It's not that the love is coming and going. It's the block is coming and going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But just, just rest easy that it's, it's there. It always will be. It, it always has been. And it's there for every single person. Mm -hmm. That okay. makes a lot of sense. Sometimes, you know, my friends want to do something or hang out and I just really don't want to. Yeah. And it's not like me. And then other times we'll hang out and I'll want to say something to them like, I just love the way that 
you know, color looks on your eyeshadow, your eyeshadow looks or something. And I, I won't say it because I'm like, I just don't feel like it, but I do feel like it, but I don't feel like it. Yep. And that that's not like me. Normally I would just, oh, your eyeshadow looks so pretty. You know, like I have no problem sharing compliments with people and making them feel great, you know, or even like liking a post is something so simple. And yeah. then I'm just like fling right by it. And that, that it's just not like me. Yeah. So I do at times feel like, oh yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to say hi. Oh, that's cute. Look at her. You know, where other people might say, oh, she just wants attention where I'm looking at them like, oh, she's so cute. Look at her, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> And then like throwing out a bunch of hearts and like, whatever, you're so cute or whatever. So I am starting to kind of feel that coming back mm -hmm. very slightly. Okay. I forget which of Brene Brown's books, Brene Brown's books. Am I saying that right? You say that 10 which times Which of fast. Brene Brown's books <laughs> she talks about when you have a, up a wall not only are you keeping out the, the negative stuff, but you're keeping out the positive stuff too. Yeah. Like it, it blocks the flow of everything. And that's what I'm afraid of. That's why I'm like, I don't want to be like that. You're not like that. Okay. You're here. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're getting to know that wall. We are. We're figuring yeah, it like, out. What the hell is this wall? Yeah. What the hell? And as soon as, as, soon as that comes down, then, then the flow of everything can start yeah. again. Yeah. But you are love. Thank you. And you'll always be love. Yeah. I've got a lot of love to give. You sure do. I do. And I like to give it. You're good at giving love. I like it. It makes me feel good. <laughs> I mean, even if that other person, you know, I've, I've given love to people, you know, even like female friends just, and they're like, what's up with her? She's always, just, she's just kissing ass. She'll say that, you know, whatever, just to kiss ass. And then my other friends will be like, no, really, that's just how she is. <laughs> like, she's not kissing your ass. Yeah. Trust me. She's not an ass kisser. <laughs> right. You know, but she just sweet. Yeah. And I, I try to teach my children just to be lovely. Being lovely and being caring is always going to get you a little further. I've got a lot of good things going on. I need to stop being so hard on myself. Yes. I really do. Just yeah. accepting myself, like you said from last time, just acceptance. Mm -hmm. It has been helping. I've been seeing a lot of brighter days than I had before that. Fantastic. Isn't that weird? No, I, I'm gonna I love it. I'm going to accept the sadness and I then the sadness it. goes away. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> okay. I'm like, okay. Okay, so next time, bring a couple pictures. Okay. Or one between the ages of like three and six, if you okay. can. Okay, all right. Okay, we'll get I to sure work can. on reparenting. Oh, yay. <laughs> this is gonna make my feelings hurt <laughs> yes it is oh, shit. <laughs> shit. it'll be worth it though it will because look how well i was able to tell my story to you without mm -hmm. the earthquake that normally happened in my soul this is trauma healing this is what it looks like so the more and more we heal mm -hmm. from the trauma mm -hmm. it's not that the trauma goes away it's still right. there it's that you've, you're assimilating it into your story and it doesn't affect you as much or at all anymore. Right. That's, that's where we want to get with the trauma. And today it was really cool because you got to see just how much less it's affecting you now yeah. than four or five months ago. Right. And that's the first thing I noticed was I'm not even shaking as bad as I was. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not even like shuddering. I wasn't even shuddering. Normally my whole head will shake and <laughs> I was really good. Yeah. I yeah, noticed you that did right great. Yeah. Like, wow, I'm not even as, you know, I could tell my heart was beating really fast, but I wasn't sweating. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I wasn't like freaking out as much. It's cool. Huh? Yeah. It's so cool. I needed you <laughs> so bad. <laughs> you don't even know how bad I needed like, you. It's almost like, how did it work? Huh? It's so simple. <laughs> Like, how did that uh, yesterday I was working with a client. She's like, I don't, I don't even know what, what we're doing, but it's, it's working because I'm not as angry anymore. And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> it's really subtle. You, exactly. you really, it's not like huge moments mm -hmm. usually sometimes mm -hmm. it is, but it's like, oh, whatever you're doing, just keep doing I'm it. I'm not as, I'm not <laughs> as riled up right now. Right. That's so good. Is this an okay place to stop today? I think we're great. I think we're great too. I think you're great. <laughs> <laughs> where did we go? Where did we go? Where did we go? And where have I been? Who 
am I now? Who am I now? Who am I now? And who was I then? And is it all? I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, Julie. Gosh, this, of course, I knew this story before, but even just hearing it again. Ugh, the dark night. I don't even know where to start. It was almost like I was watching a show and I didn't want it to stop. I did want it to stop for her. Right. But I, it was so, like, she could literally make a mini series out of that night all of the things all the details yes i mean and i wish that we could warn every woman in this county about this one person so that nobody ever Mm -hmm. had a run-in with him because it's always going to go bad right there is no happy ending to being with this person right he's out there though he is Doing his thing. Mm-hmm. Scouting. And that's disgusting. Ooh. Where where do we want to start with Julie? Because there's so many play. I mean, do we want to... I don't know where we want to start. Well, I mean, there's, there's so much to say. What really strikes me from my point of view is... And, and uh, Julie mentions it several times how, like, I can tell the story now and I'm not shaking. When she talks about how her whole body shakes... You know, she mentions it a couple of times, mm-hmm. you know, like my body used to completely shake and you can feel it. You can see like every finger, her legs, you can see everything in her quivering. <laughs> She's like a chihuahua. Oh, you yeah, know what I mean? I How do. chihuahuas just get like to <clears throat> shake constantly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. When I first saw her and she was beginning to be able to retell the story, she would literally quiver like a chihuahua on the couch. And so for her to be at a place now where she's able to retell it and not shake it, you know, and there were a few moments where she could tell her nervous system was getting like pretty activated and she was able to like be with it and stay with it until she calmed back down again. You know, she does it beautifully, but for the most part, it's, it's a beautiful sign of assimilation. This trauma is, it's a part of my story, but it no longer affects me the way that it used to. And that's what we want to do in counseling and therapy when we're working on trauma. It's not that we're going to forget about the trauma. Absolutely not. What we want to do is we want to integrate it into our story and have it no longer affect us. Like we're no longer triggered by it. And it's so, so beautiful to see the work that she's done has led her to a place where she can tell the story and not be nearly as affected as she once was. She's done a beautiful job. How long ago was this night? Gosh, about a year ago now. And was that their last physical contact? I think so. Other than court. Yeah. Yeah. So since then, she has gotten a restraining order against him. So she did have to go to court and speak to the judge. And he spoke to the judge. And it's really interesting when he went to court, he said, everything she says is true. Really? Mm -hmm. I just want her to be happy. So if this restraining order is going to make her happy, I'll do it. He didn't argue with a single thing. Now, is he still married? Yeah. Same person, Mm -hmm. still married, living together. Lucky her. Oof. Give her my card. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Because... This isn't going to be the last time that this happens. No, of course not. Unless he, and this rarely happens, but it it happens every once in a while, where he takes a look within himself and says, you know what? I'm a dick. I got something off. Yeah. And that's something I want to work on. And he gets the intensive help. And I'm saying like twice a week therapy medications monitored closely by a psychiatrist like hardcore for years stuff yeah for years it it would be hard hard work for him and he deserves it he deserves to be i mean obviously he's a miserable 
person yeah. inside. It must just be horrible for him. Yeah, like you can never be completely happy, whether you're married or just in a relationship or just by yourself. I mean, he's not a happy person. Clearly. He, from the right. inside out, he's just not a happy person. Right. Being a narcissist and the whole gaslighting thing that I'm so glad she recognized what that was and what he was doing to her and how she was not at fault for those things. Yeah. Even though sometimes it, it does make you think like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Did I? Maybe I did maybe, make him react yeah, that way. That was my fault that he threw my phone. For sure. I and shouldn't have said that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, the whole threatening of the children thing. Mm-hmm. Nope. And that was a conversation she and I had because she felt that she knew him so well. And I know a lot of people can relate to this. I know him so well. I think he was just upset. He just said those things out of anger. And I had to like really look her straight in the eye and say, I don't care if it was in anger or not. What if he gets so angry, he blacks out and he does it. You have to protect your children. I don't care if it feels crazy, like, oh, he would never do this to my kids. I know, you know, I know his heart, blah, blah, blah. If someone says that about your children, protect them. And his heart was dark enough to put his hands on you. And whether he blacks out for that minute and whether he's, you know, recognized later and he's like, oh, baby, I'm so sorry. Please don't leave. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, he has lost control multiple times. Mm -hmm. He has lost all self-control. To be able to put his hands on her, Mm -hmm. to be able to hold her basically hostage. So who's to say that he is not capable of losing self-control at any moment? Right. And we don't know what he's capable of in that that moment. Right. Uh, Chances are, is he actually going to hurt the kids? Probably not. Probably not. It doesn't matter. Mm -mm. Still protect him. Let's not even try to. Right. But this just goes to show how much an abuser mind fucks their partner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like when we're in abusive relationships, we are spending so much of our time minimizing what they do, sort of validating what they do, being understanding about what they do, trying to get behind the motivation. Like, why would he be so upset? Or why would she have said that to me? You know, abusers usually partner up with people who try to be understanding and non-judgmental and tend to be introspective. Like, what part did I play in the breakdown of that conversation so they can prey on that because they know that we'll be like, oh gosh, he's just, he's just really stressed out today. Yeah. Or, oh, I think I just really poked at his ego in a way that just got to him. And you want to talk about an ego? (laughs) Ew. Period. Yeah. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know what kind of great characteristics that he has. I don't know. I don't know anything about this man, but I can tell he has one Hell of an ego. A super ego. Yeah. Like, he puts it out there like he has an ego. He oh. talks like he has an ego. He actually has no ego. Okay, so he has he's got to pump himself nothing. up. Nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got to pump himself if up. Because you, there's nobody if you that have a big ego, you don't have to talk about you it. You don't talk about it ever. No. You never have to tell anybody yeah. how great you are. Yeah. Because <laughs> your ego is so strong. Right. So I, I want to talk about something that nobody wants to talk about. Okay. And I love, I got a comment on my Instagram post once when I was posting about narcissists and she basically called me out and she was like, well, narcissists are people too. Like we can't talk about them. Like they're just these horrible people. They deserve love and they deserve to get treatment just like the rest of us. And you know what? She's absolutely right. Of course. She's absolutely right. So I'm not bringing this up to minimize Julie's experience whatsoever, but I want to inject the conversation with, I also understand that where Mark came from must have been really, really horrible to be an adult who has within himself the ability to treat another person that way. What happened to you? It doesn't excuse any of his behavior, but also it's okay to have compassion for abusers too. It's okay. Sure. Because it did come from somewhere and they do need help. But that's, he, yeah, that's he deserves- on him to get that help. Right. And that's not anyone else's. Mm-hmm. He has to recognize that there's a problem and he has to want to get help. And right. the only way I probably would imagine a narcissist would try to look for some kind of help is if they were actually so miserable within themselves that they were just wanted to be find happiness and peace. Because there can't be peace. It just seems like there's constant chaos. 
Mm. within maybe inside of him, inside of his head, inside of his body, just chaos. I don't know. And I'm not well, even trying if you to have, sound like I If you have a cause... personality disorder, you you lack self-awareness. So even if he were to sit with himself, he can't look outside of himself like and like look back in at himself and see himself objectively from another person's perspective. That's one of the hallmarks of having a personality disorder. So what brings a narcissist to <laughs> therapy? Yes. <laughs> Narcissists bring their partners to therapy so that the therapist can fix their partners. Ah, uh, duh. And <laughs> narcissists will sometimes go to therapy to look good. Like, look at how good I am at, you know, self-care. Trying to get validation from the therapist. Uh-huh. You know, so that they can be like to their spouse, I go to therapy every week. What do you do? See, you're the problem here. Mm-hmm. I, ta- I take care of myself. I go to the gym. I go to therapy. I eat well, but you don't. The nature of a narcissist is they always have to be above anyone, anywhere. Nobody's nobody's on that level. Nobody can be on that level. Right. So they always have to be propping themselves up or putting someone else down. And they'll, you know, use lots of different tactics. It's really, really fascinating. The tactic that he used with the sex. Okay. So out of nowhere, I'm not in the mood. I just won't have it in me to come tonight, but I'll make you come. Because I I know that's... That's why you're here. That's That's why you you want. Right? What kind of a manipulative tactic is that? Is it that interesting? What kind is that? Because to me, Mm -hmm. that's incredibly insulting. And this is just me. I'm a normal person. I don't have any background in this. But to me, that is incredibly insulting. Mm-hmm. If we're laying, you know, in bed and he's like, all right, just like, fine, let's get it over with. I'll help you. And I'm just not feeling it, but mm-hmm. I'll help you because I know that's what you're here for. Mm-hmm. That is incredibly insulting. But what I'm thinking is that's what he wants to do. That's what he's trying to do is make you feel like shit, basically. Uh-huh. But what is going on in his head when he is doing that to her? What is his goal? So if I say to you, I know the only reason why you come here is to fuck. What am I trying to get from you? Sympathy? I don't know. And I'm not in his head. Right. But that's the only response I I can imagine he was trying to elicit from her, whether it was conscious or subconscious. I don't know. But what that's doing is putting her in this position of like, let me. No, no, no. Let me fix this. Let me fix it. No, you're, you're, yeah, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm going to put uh-uh. you back on your pedestal. And again, it puts them in this position of like, I'm in control here. Ew. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in control of what's happening next. I'm in control of like what you're about to say next. It's this like power thing. So let me ask you this, hypothetically speaking, if this would have been me and I would have been in Julie's situation and someone said that to me, Mm -hmm. I don't know who the hell you think you are or what the hell you think you can do for me that nobody else can do for me. And bye. And I would leave. Her reaction may have been like, honey, That's not it. Like, you know that I love you. I don't always, I don't only, I don't need that from you. I'm fine if we're just laying here. I'm fine if, you know, and she's Mm -hmm. kind of stroking the ego because that's what they need. Mm -hmm. But my reaction would have been exactly the opposite. So I probably would have gotten my ass whooped. (laughs) So I think what you're saying is it just goes to show how mindfuck she had been over a long period of time. Yes. To... Instead of being like, uh, I'm out of here. Yeah. That's craziness. And I'll instead because I don't need you to take me anywhere. Right. Instead, maybe trying to placate him. And yes. You know, da, 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 which she, and then she did say, I love you. I want to go home. And obviously and she, she has she a tried, fear of him. Right. Right. So we She's don't want to shake him like a chihuahua. Yeah. So we don't want to right. wake the bear. We right. don't want to do that. We don't want to rattle his cage. Right. Because that guy, to me, I'm pointing at your bed for some reason. He's laying on that bed right there. Right? Oh, I don't know okay. why. Hello, Mark. Mark. Yeah, he's laying on that bed, just thinking that he is the shit. In but, my in my mind, we have him like hogtied. <laughs> absolutely. Get, What's just, up, Mark? Bam, can't talk, sock in his mouth. Um, but, I mean, she knows that she doesn't want to rattle that cage. Mm-hmm. And so I understand that for her safety, I get where she goes with it. But I guess just because I don't know this guy, of course, it's easy for me to say, like, um, no, I'm sorry, you are and, not going to speak to me uh, that way. This is so important. I think we need to pause and we need to talk about Absolutely. this. Like, you're bringing up such a good point. Because from the outside, it's like, bitch, just peace out on him. Exactly. When you, you are in it, you have no idea the millions of moments of manipulation that have mind. This is like 
the millions of moments of manipulation that have mind fucked a person into staying one more day with this Absolutely. abuser. And fear. Right. And it's so easy from the outside to say, just leave him or just, you know, no, just talk is. back to yeah, him. Just slap right. him the next time. No. No, you can't. No, you can't. Mm-mm. You can't. And that's why people who are being abused stay so quiet in their relationships. Because if they were to ever say, you're never going to believe what he did last night, what's the response going to be? Why are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? Leave him. Yeah, you're like, so what are you much with better him? than that. You just you need to protect your kids. Exactly. It's like, yeah. okay, so easy to say from the outside. It is easy to say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I totally get that. When I was in that situation, you never heard me talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it. Right. I mean... Absolutely. I would sound like an idiot if I told you all the things that I'm going through right now, but don't tell me to leave him because that is not an option at this moment. Right. I have to think of this man might actually kill me. Right. This man might actually harm myself or one of my children. Correct. Also, P.S. Side note, genius throwing the phone that way. Right. So that she could run out this way. Mm hmm. That's like law and order stuff. SVU. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You throw it that way so you can run out that way because you know he's going after that mm-hmm. and you have enough time to get. But why did it trigger him so badly when she said, well, I guess I'll just call blank from the outside. Like what, what triggered him with that? I don't know. And that's his wife, correct? Right. If I had to guess, mm-hmm. it was because that was so out of character for her. To say, I'm going to do this thing to you. Yeah. That that's what freaked him out. That she was taking a power position. And so he had to come in with a different manipulation tactic to then gain power of the situation again. Narcissists, and not even just narcissists, but anyone who's trying to gain power in a situation, they'll flip from yelling and screaming and being physically powerful to crying and, you know, I'm so sorry. If that's going to get them back in charge of the situation and directing the course of the events, they'll do whatever. I'm going to call your kids. I'm going to kill your kids. I'm going to cry. I'm going to yell. And especially when they feel like they're losing you, they will start grasping for it anything. So they'll start going all over the place. You don't know what's going to come next from them, which is kind of terrifying, but yeah. Did he go out in peace? I already know the answer to this. I feel like. No, surprisingly quiet from him. Really? Like in court, you know, being really agreeable, has only reached out a few times in very, very like quiet, non-threatening ways. I told her you can expect him to get real nasty you know, after you remove yourself from him. And he hasn't. How does she feel? I mean, does she miss him? But, 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 let me say this. Yeah. (laughs) That is another manipulation tactic that narcissists use. Like, I'm going to remove myself from you. Oh, they're going to flip the script. Me. Yeah. So they'll go silent on you also. To try to get you to reach out. Mm -hmm. Boy, those little buggers, they're sneaky, aren't they? Yeah, they'll do anything. They'll do anything. And they're not I even consciously even, doing it. I, that's what, they're that's just... <laughs> what is so mind-boggling to me right. is they don't even know that they're doing it. Uh-uh. But they're like a freaking wizard. Yeah. And if you ask them, why are you doing this? They'll be like, oh, well, I'm doing it because da 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 and, and they'll give you a perfect explanation for Absolutely. why they're behaving the way they are. It makes total sense to them. Just don't ever waste your time trying to understand a narcissist. It's you just, literally you never impossible. You never will. Yeah. They're, they're not operating with real life logic. They're kind of making it up as they go. You know what? We should, we should have a, a dedicate whole... a whole podcast to that. Yep, You're I'm absolutely down. right. I'm fascinated with narcissists. Because you know what? I, I feel like I attract narcissists like flies to honey. Do you really? Oh, they I mean, love you are very sweet. Me, really <laughs> love me. So well, and I love them too. Yeah, at first. I'm. Well, Duh, like they're they're very charismatic, aren't they? Oh, and yeah, very... they're gregarious, they're smart, they know a lot, they, yeah. they've done a lot, they're great in bed, they, you know, they're freaking firing on all cylinders. They also, I mean, they talk themselves up very much so, yes? Oh, constantly. The word's been thrown around a lot. Yeah. But this is actually a disorder. They're so prevalent because they're so good. You know, they're good at getting jobs and they're good at getting 
spouses and they're good, you know, so they're, they're everywhere. They have a personality disorder, but they're so good at getting into (laughs) the situations that they want to be in that they're everywhere. Now, someone with histrionic personality disorder or borderline personality disorder, dependent personality disorder, they are not so good at positioning themselves in normal, I'm using air quotes, everyday situations. But narcissists are so gregarious and so just charming that they end up being in all of our lives because they can kind of weasel themselves anywhere. Yeah, in one way or another. They can walk into a bar and be the hit, you know, before they leave. They can walk into an interview and get the job. They're just everywhere. They nail it socially. I think that's why it's becoming more and more like common to hear about narcissism. Like, oh, my my sister's a narcissist. My body, you know, because they're just everywhere. They are mm-hmm. everywhere. Yep. Back to Julie. Back to Julie. Yeah. Can you relate? Wow. Look at you, co-host of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can re- I can relate. I've I've been through um what I consider three pretty traumatic relationships. I can relate not to her dark night. Thank God. But I can relate to the recovery from I I totally trusted you. I gave you everything and you flipped on me. And I don't really like this word, but for lack of better words, you were evil underneath, you know, like when you, when the rock got flipped over, it was evil underneath. Oof. That and, gave me the, ew, that gave me like, oh, the yeah. goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. It gave me the chills mm-hmm. when you said that. Yeah. Because going, it going from like literally being in love with someone, loving someone through and through. And allowing yourself to be so vulnerable with another person, allowing someone to have contact with your kid, and then they do the most evil things to you. It's so hard to wrap my head around it, my heart around it. And it's so hard to move forward still being who who I am. You know, I'm a loving person. I'm an open person. But then also mourning the loss of me. Not that it's bad. And I relate to that too. You know, this, whatever I've been through has changed me. I'm not who I was before. Absolutely. And I liked who I was before, you know, and, and al- you take that with allowing you, allowing yourself to morph into something new when you didn't want to morph. I was happy, you know, and maybe I'm not so open. Maybe I'm not so trusting. Maybe I'm not so, you know, all these things that I loved about myself and allowing those things to be new in me. Yeah, man, I relate to Julie on so many levels. How about yeah. you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I wish I didn't, mm-hmm. but um, I do. I do relate to her on a few different levels. One thing that struck me as extraordinary is that she consciously thought to herself when you panic you die faster she actually thought Mm -hmm. like i'm never going to see my kids again Mm -hmm. and i cannot even fathom the thought do i relate to her yes unfortunately i have had the experience of tiptoeing around someone and being so scared of what to say and so scared of what to do And being scared of the things that are normally you, that all of these things can trigger someone else. So I have lived in fear of a person. I do relate to her in that way of appeasing that person. But But can I, can I just pause for a moment? Yes. All hail to the freeze response. One, because what you're talking about right now is the freeze response. It's going into a state of, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to fight because that is actually the most effective way to stay alive right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, either you're going to react and get on their level, which is not going to be any good. No. It's not going to do any good to get on their level. You're going to right with someone who's bigger, stronger, more damage faster than absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, no. But yeah, no, I I absolutely related and and um 
And I'm so happy. And unfortunately, that... I think there's going to be a ton of people out there who thousands, relate. Thousands and thousands it's, and thousands. It's just wild. You know, especially in my profession, I get to see just how much abuse is happening in homes behind closed doors that nobody's talking about because for the millions of reasons why we don't talk about what happens behind our closed doors. Yeah. Yeah. So clinical significance. I think we've already talked about a lot of clinically significant stuff. I want to add something to the discussion there. The issue of trust. That's a big, big deal for her right now. And I want to talk about trust. In the session, I love the fact that she nailed it. She nailed the fact that she needs to trust herself. It's not about trusting other people. It's about trusting yourself. And this will probably be my tips for listeners today is building trust with yourself rather than how am I ever going to trust another person again? Because people are going to let you down. I will let you down. You're going to let me down because we're human. We make mistakes. We have our days. We, you know, we have our moods. So we let each other down all the time. You can't trust another person is going to fulfill exactly what you want all the time. And you can't trust another person is saying what they mean. And you can't trust another person is never going to hurt you. You just can't, you can't trust anything outside of yourself. So when it comes to building trust, start with yourself and the homework I gave her was really start paying attention to every time you have your own back and you actually do stand up for yourself or you actually do protect yourself or you take really good care of yourself or you do something nice for yourself. Every single time those things happen, say, hey, look, I'm I'm actually really good to myself. I can trust entering a relationship because I know I'm going to take good care of myself in this relationship. I can't trust this other person's going to take good care of me. Yeah, for sure. But I know I'll take good care of me. And so So, is that where you set your own boundaries? Is that where you know how to, I mean, does that come with that? Right. I have to trust that I'm going to know what my boundaries are and I'm going to stick to them. And set healthy boundaries with whoever it is that you choose to let in your life. Right. So the times that you let yourself down by not sticking to your boundaries, you're losing trust for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I can't trust that I'm going to take. I it can't trust myself. myself to make this decision. Mm-hmm. Like that's, mm-hmm. you know, I've made this. I made a bad decision before, or two, or three, or I've made these right. bad decisions before. How can I trust myself to make a good decision? Right. So start proving to yourself that you can trust your own damn self, that you have your own damn back. Right. That you are your own damn best friend. And trust is built over time, you know, and there's no, there's no other way to build it. And this goes for other people too, you know, like if you're dating someone, you can't fully trust them until you've seen a long track record of, yeah, this person generally speaking never lies. This person generally speaking never does anything intentionally to hurt me. Like this person generally over a long period of time has built my trust. You need to have a history of taking good care of yourself before you're going to trust yourself. Absolutely. And there's no fucking way around that. It's time. And another funny thing about trust is <laughs> you mess up once, all trust is gone. So if I have a partner that for nine months has never told me a lie, but on month nine lies to me, all nine months worth of trust building is gone. Same goes for yourself. It's not like a scary thing. It's just understand the way that trust works. If a lie happens or if you fail to take good care of yourself, okay, it's going to take another long period of time to build that trust back up again. That's just how it works. If you trust someone and I mean, I watch too much Dateline to trust people like Mm -hmm. since I worked inside of an institution, I see all of the ugly and the actual evil. Mm -hmm. I will not air quote that because that is actual evil. Okay. So I've seen all of the evil that can really happen on the outside and and, in the world that's happening every single day. Mm hmm. It's out there and there are people out there that they gain your trust because that's their MO and then boom. Yeah. Screw you over. I mean, trusting yourself to make that decision. And then of course that, that gets you, I shouldn't have trusted that person. And then that comes back to you. And then, you know, you've disappointed yourself, but I mean, honestly, this person made you think that you could absolutely trust them. (laughs) Right. Well, and I think that brings up another good point about trust and that's, it's not really your job to be like the drug dog when it comes to trustworthiness. No, you can't sniff that shit out. You can't. No. And that, it's not your I job. I wish you could, though. That would be cool. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm sniffing but, a lie here. You know, it's, it's other people's jobs to be trustworthy and to know that 
when a person shows that they're not trustworthy, that you'll take care of yourself. But how are you to know if someone is trustworthy or not? You have no idea. All right. We've hit our points. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Julie. We love you so much. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Consent to Treat. If you love the music, go to gospelwhiskeyrunners.com. It's one of my favorite bands. Absolutely love them. You can find us at consenttotreatpodcast.com. You can find us on Instagram at Consent to Treat. And you can find us on Facebook at Consent to Treat. Did I leave anything out? I don't think so. I think you got it all. I got it all? I think so. Right? Kind of nailed it. It sounds like it. Kind of nailed it on the Yeah, you like had everything was already... I should be paid for this. You really should. Mm -hmm. Like everything was already done. I snapped my fingers and the microphone was like... Boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. Nailed it. Love you all. See you back here next week. It's going to be a good one. (laughs) Bye. Bye.